This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and look at impairment. So this is the first real new bit, I think, with regards to P2. Okay, because when you went through and looked at impairments within F7, you were always given the impairment in the subsidiary and you were always given the impairment in the associates. And all you had to do was to take that number and to process the accounting entries within the group financial statements. Now at P2 level, you'll still have to process the entries within the group financial statements, but you may also be required to calculate the impairment. OK, and it then isn't actually anything too new because we've already looked at impairments in IS36 within F7. Um, remember, an asset or a cash generating was, unit was impaired if the carrying value was below the recoverable amount, wasn't it? OK. Uh, and we went through there, didn't we? Uh, and took the recoverable amount uh, was the higher of the value in use. And was it the, the fair value, less cost to sell? OK, so essentially what you've gone through and seen previously is that if you have the, is it the carrying value is greater than the recoverable amount? Uh, the recoverable amount is essentially the best alternative use that you could get from the asset. And the alternative use is to use it, the value in use. Uh, and uh, is it alternatively to sell it? Okay. So if the recoverable amount uh, is below the carrying value, or as I prefer to say it, the carrying value is greater than the recoverable amount. Uh, then you have an impairment. And the impairment is the difference between the carrying value and recoverable amount, isn't it? OK. Uh, the issue that you have is in the exam, you'd be given the value in use. You'd be given the fair value, less cost to sell. What you have to consider here is the carrying value. OK. So if we're looking, first of all, the, at the subsidiary, then the subsidiary is your cash generating unit, uh, whereby the carrying value is that of the subsidiary plus any goodwill. So the carrying value of the subsidiary essentially is saying, well, look, it's just S's net assets at the reporting date, isn't it? So what you take from working to, okay, uh, plus the value of any goodwill, which is what you see from working number three. OK, you add those together and that will give you the carrying value that you then compare to the value in use of the sub and the fair value less cost to sell of the sub. That's it. OK, then take the number and then you make the comparisons. OK, so if I reach down for my calculator, we can go through there and work out the example that talks about subsidiary impairment. It says calculate the impairment in the subsidiary to be recognised in the group financial statement of Dublin. At is it the, the 31st of December 2015? Okay. Uh, so what have we got? Uh, Dublin acquired 60% of the equity share capital of Fairy House on the 1st of January 2015 for 20 million. The fair value of the net assets was 25, and the fair value of the non controlling interest was 15. Okay. Uh, so what you've got there essentially is you could work out the goodwill, couldn't we? Uh, based upon what you paid the NCI and the net assets that you have gained control of. Uh, it then tells me that Fairy House made profits for the year end December 15 of 5. So if you like, that's the growth in the subsidiary to the reporting date. Uh, and its value in use was calculated at 38 and its fair value less cost to sell at 36. OK, uh, so we could work out the recoverable amount quite straightforwardly, looking at the higher of those being 38. OK. Uh, so let's go through, uh, have a play around with the figures. OK, uh, so what you've got there, if we think about the carrying value, first of all, OK, let's just do a, a separate little working underneath. What you can do just to get it into exam mode. OK, so where the reporting date or at year end hotel motel doesn't make any difference. Uh, we've got acquisition and is it post acquisition? And if we just look at the net assets per the question acquisition, uh, the net assets was there at 25 million. So you've got there, is it 25 million? 
So that's the total of share capital, retained earnings, other components of equity. Uh, we're told that the post acquisition profits were five. So at year end, it must be 30, mustn't it? Okay, so you've got the a balancing figure of 30, which are the net assets of the sub at year end. Okay, so the carrying value starts off as 30, doesn't it? To which we then need to add on the goodwill, don't we? So we can do another goodwill working. I'll do it shorthand. Being a bit lazy, but there we go. Uh, we paid 20. Uh, the NCI was 15. So 20 plus the 15. And we know that the net assets were 25, don't we? So does that give me goodwill of 10? Okay. So the carrying value of the subsidiary at the reporting date is 40 million. Okay, so that's your cash generating units, uh, the smallest group of assets that, that generate your, your profits and your revenues uh, independently of everything else. Uh, so you've got a carrying value of 40, which we then need to compare, don't we, to the recoverable amount. What is the recoverable amount? Well, the recoverable amount is the higher of the value in use. And the fair value less cost to sell. Well, we've determined that there as 38, haven't we? So the recoverable amount is 38. So what you've got there is that there is an impairment, isn't it? The carrying value is 40. The recoverable amount is 38, which is those two, isn't it? Okay. So your impairment for the year is 2 million. Okay. Excellent. Uh, curious, where's that 38 come from? Just check, double check. Uh, the recoverable amount we said is 38. And that's because you're looking at the higher of the value in use and the fair value less cost to sell. So within this example here, uh, the value in use was 38. The fair value less cost to sell was 36. So the higher of those two is 38, isn't it? So you're comparing your 38 versus your 40, and the difference there gives you two, okay? Uh, you don't have to process the adjustment because it doesn't ask you within the question, but if you did, uh, with your cash generating unit, your impairment goes to goodwill first, doesn't it? Well, maybe any specific assets before the goodwill, but it doesn't mention any specific assets here. So we would credit my goodwill is that there with the 2 million. Okay. Uh, and then what you need to go through and do there is you need to process a debit. Uh, now here we bought 60% of the share capital. The non-controlling interest is based upon fair value. So here you would need to debit your group retained earnings with 60% of the 2. So is that 1.2. And you would also need to debit the non-controlling interest with the 40% of the two, which should be the 0 0.8. So you're reducing your goodwill. You're reducing your group retained earnings. And is it there your NCI? The debit to group retained earnings is in working five. And the debit to non-controlling interest is there as working four. So... You know, it, it's important, even though we weren't asked for the journals, to ensure that we know what the journal is so we can then start to apply it within the question. OK, so you reduce your goodwill by two. So given that goodwill previously was 10. That would be now eight, wouldn't it, as you reduce it by the two. And then you reduce your group retained earnings by P share and then the non-controlling interest by the NCI share. OK, again. The reason why we have split it between group retained earnings and NCI is because we are looking at the full goodwill method. Okay, there you have it. Excellent. That's everything there to do with the subsidiary. In the next session, we'll go through there.
apply the same rules, same principles, but to an associate.